The next vehicle that we're looking at is another MBT, and that MBT is of course the Type 79. This vehicle uh, once again benefited from the relationship between the West and China, and uh, it actually created this joint venture in the mid 80s to upgrade the Type 69. So what actually happened is after a bunch of the upgrades, it was known as the Type 69 III, and then the Chinese decided to give it a new designation of the Type 79. So what are these upgrades from the Type 69 to this new Type 79? Well, because they were able to use some technologies or import technologies from other nations, the first thing that was a big difference is they used a different fire control system. They were able to use the Marconi fire control system. This was installed on the machine, and it was also given an image enhancement night vision. But eventually, later on, this was even replaced with a thermal imager, uh, which means that this could be another vehicle vehicle for the Chinese which could have access to you know thermals uh, in game. It also was given a better gun, an improved type 83 modified 105 millimeter rifled cannon. This was based on the L7 that we talked about before and it also had a thermal sleeve on it and was able to fire pretty much anything under the sun, APFSDS, heat and also heat FT or heat FS. And uh, the other things as well uh, that you can you know tell the vehicle apart is uh, the Type 79 uh, actually has the fume extractors on the main gun uh, in the center of the barrel, whereas the 100 millimeters from other ones have the uh, it's on the muzzle. So that is how you tell them apart from different vehicles. It's pretty much the only way is through the gun uh, which is coming out of it. So you have to work out if it's 100 millimeter or 105 millimeter. The other thing as well is when it comes to this vehicle, the Type 79, it was given a new diesel engine. Seven 730 horsepower so it should have a little bit more oomph. Now it's time to have a look at a vehicle of German descent, the SDKFC 222, or the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 222. Now, this vehicle uh, is kind of interesting when it comes to how it ended up in China, and also what is it about. So, let's go through, you know, first of all, it's a uh, type of vehicle and what it is and then we'll go into you know how did it end up in China so the first thing is when it comes to Sonderkraft Fahrzeug it uh, generally actually pertains to a special purpose vehicle or a special ordinance vehicle this is something which is used obviously for a special purpose when we talk about uh, the 222 that special purpose was generally stuff such as reconnaissance and uh, you know just general armored car duties whether it be supporting infantry or reconnaissance duties. The 222 was a modernized version of the 221 and as the, and this was in the 30s by the way, as the needs of the German army evolved they decided they needed a better design for their armored cars. So everything was pretty much changed from the 221 to the 222. They reshaped the hull, the internal structure was also changed, the uh, turret was also completely changed and the rear was also created to be more pyramid mid-like. It was longer and uh, because they wanted to add heavier weapons uh, to the machine and the chassis itself also had to be strengthened. The whole thing was rebuilt from scratch and it actually had no relationship to the former commercial commercial chassis which was used on the 221. The production was done by a bunch of different uh, companies and it was started in 1936 and eventually the production ended in 1943. They made a bunch of these these vehicles, around about 1800 of them, uh, were built in seven different series, and the first uh, type or the first batch of them uh, were received the MG 34 machine gun in the turret top, uh, which was of course still open. It was protected by anti grenade mesh in two pieces, but the main improvement over the 221 to the 222 was the addition of the lightweight Rheinmetall 20mm auto cannon, uh, the weapon which was used by mainly German. German armored scout vehicles, you can actually see it in the game, uh, with vehicles like the 141 and the uh, Panzer 2C. Uh, this vehicle, this uh, 20 millimeter, eventually became the KWK 30 as it was known, and it was fully automatic, had a 280 uh, RPM fire rate, and also could fire a 5.2 ounce AP shell at a muzzle velocity of around about 800 meters per second. It was eventually, later on, replaced with the KWK 38, which actually had a better fire rate than it, the 480 RPM, 
them, but uh, most of these, you know, 222s would have had the KWK-30 by the time that this was obviously shipped to China. So how did China come into this? Well, it seems like a handful of them were sold to the Republic of China in 1939, and not just uh, the 222s, the 221s were also sold uh, to China at a similar time, and uh, the reason why uh, the Chinese liked these things was because they gave them, uh, it gave them a decent platform to be able to actually adapt them and add their own armaments, including heavy machine guns on top of them, to, uh, to light anti-tank guns. So they saw it as a very versatile vehicle that they could use uh, in their stocks to be able to, you know, fight off whatever menace they were trying to annihilate. So, yeah, even though this is the 222, it may not actually get the 20 millimeter that we know and love uh, from the Germans. It may actually get a different gun, some form of Chinese gun, and the 20 millimeter version could be saved for the German tech tree. The PTZ-89 is kind of a weird and wonderful tank destroyer that the Chinese made. It was developed in uh, the late 70s to early 80s and began its service life in 1989. It's actually out of service now. It was replaced by some better and bigger machines and its service life ended in 2015. It was also produced from the late 80s to the mid 90s. So this is another one of those vehicles which is technically a 90s vehicle. Now, why is this one so significant? Well, first of all, a lot of people that I've talked to have kind of talked about this being very similar to the Object 120, and after having a look into it, there is definitely significant differences between this and the Object 20, but the general layout is very, very similar to it. So the PTZ-89 at the end of the day is a machine that was created to try and deal with an issue that the Chinese were uh, seeing that may happen. So at the time of its uh, service introduction, the majority of Chinese vehicles used the 100mm cannon. Therefore, they felt that they needed a larger caliber gun to be able to deal with some of the incoming threats that may come from other countries in the time of the Cold War. So they developed a 120mm smoothbore gun and put it on this machine, the PTZ-89. Now this was supposed to become the main armament of future tanks for the Chinese, but instead the uh, gun, the 125mm 2A46 uh, derivative was chosen, uh, which was obviously built once again by the Chinese. So uh, this machine, even though the turret is on the back of it, it has the engine on the front with the driver to the side of it, it is uh, definitely an interesting machine and uh, doesn't really have a lot of armor on it, but has a ton of firepower from that 120 millimeter. It also has access to a semi-automatic loader, which gives this thing a rate of fire of 10 rounds per minute, so a reload speed of 6 seconds. It's also got an effective range against tanks up to 2.5 kilometers, and is supposed to have a laser rangefinder uh, built into it, but uh, there are conflicting reports on if this laser rangefinder is any good or not, as usual. There is also conflicting reports of how many of these were actually produced. There is at least 100 built, and maybe as much as 230, uh, so there doesn't seem to be a defined number on it, which is always wonderful. It also uh, could uh, fire high explosive shells up to a range of 9 kilometers in an indirect trajectory. So it wasn't just a tank destroyer, it could also be used as an artillery piece. And on top of this as well, it has a 12.7 millimeter on the top of it, just to give it uh, some support if it ever gets overrun by, let's say, some infantry members. Overall, it's looking like a really fun little vehicle. It also has access to uh, four smoke grenades, uh, two banks of them. So overall, eight smoke grenades and an MBC system uh, with a fire protection system uh, fitted as standard to it. The mobility of this vehicle is actually hampered, though, by its chassis. One of the major issues of this this vehicle is its general speed or lack thereof. On roads, it's able to go 55 kilometers an hour uh, using its 520 horsepower diesel engine pretty effectively, but off road in the field, it can only go 30 kilometers an hour, meaning that the uh, vehicle itself is seen as not really satisfactory when it comes to its overall speeds and its maneuverability was also not very, desi not very desired for a vehicle that was seen as a light, well, not a light. 
tank destroyer, but a thinly armored tank destroyer. So it should be more mobile than it is. Unfortunately, it isn't. So even though, you know, it would be similar to something like the Object 120, I don't think it would be the same just because of the fact that it's a slightly different gun, slightly different mobility, and also slightly different uses, including that artillery component. Some of the craziest vehicles that are sat in this list are actually the ZTZ-99 and also the ZTZ-99A. The reason why these are crazy is because these are vehicles from the early 2000s and they're also the Chinese third generation MBTs. A lot of these systems on these vehicles are classified and it's pretty much impossible to get, you know, un unless you're looking for very basic information, it's incredibly hard to get any information on these vehicles. But then again, in War Thunder, the highest tiers when it comes to ground vehicles are also uh, very much classified or close to, you know, a lot of the systems we know about, we just don't know the full details for. With these vehicles, it's incredibly incredibly hard, you know, to find the general, you know, uh, the general overall, you know, picture of them. So let's get into it. The ZTZ-99 is also known as the Type 99, and what it is, is it was a plan by the Chinese to replace the Type 88. It's kind of interesting how the Type 88 is actually not in this tech tree. Maybe at some point it'll make its uh, mark, but yeah, the Type 88 was a Chinese MBT from the uh, 1980s and what they wanted to do is they wanted to create a third generation MBT that would be mass produced by China completely designed in China therefore they could do whatever they wanted it is supposed to combine the ideas of modular composite armor and also tandem charge defeating ERA so very similar to contact 5 that we have from the Soviets it also has access to 125 millimeter smoothbore gun which can fire a TGMs and is also supposed to have digital systems, high mobility, so on and so forth, stuff that you find from every other uh, every other modern MBT. So where does this uh, idea start when it comes to Type 99? Well, it actually starts in the 80s, the late 80s to be exact. In 1989, there was China's start of its eighth fifth year plan. It, oh, sorry, five year plan. And it decided that it wanted to create a third generation MBT. They looked for other uh, places to basically give them uh, some inspiration. And they decided that the T-72 tank was going to be one of those uh, bases. So they made a chassis which was designed around the T-72. Uh, it had all of the Chinese subsystems in it. And then they added uh, a Chinese Type 92. Uh, oh, sorry. They, they added a Chinese... Chinese 125mm smoothbore cannon to it with the autoloader and what we're guessing is the same autoloader as the T-72 so the carousel but it's flat so it ain't gonna explode when it gets hit by other stuff and also you know, there was a bunch of other stuff added to it, uh, such as the addition of a uh, liquid-cooled V12 tin uh, twin-turbo diesel, which gave it around about 1,500 horsepower worth of oomph. Also, some other stuff such as the Type 85 heavy machine gun, the Type 59 coaxial, uh, 7.62, and also just a bunch of reactive or composite armor all over the machine that we just don't know enough about. The gun itself the 125 millimeter is capable of firing all of the modern shells APFS DS uh, heat frag HET and also ATGMs uh, so it's very similar to uh, the Soviet gun and according to sources it is supposed to be able to penetrate around about 700 millimeters of RHA obviously take all of that with a pinch of salt it has of course an IR automatic target tracker when it comes to its fire control system also has hunter killer K capabilities which is kind of fun and the gun of course is fully stabilized and has uh, some thermal sights uh, for the gunner and uh, we're not exactly sure about the commander but I'm guessing it probably has some form of thermal sights for him as well and it also has a targeting computer once again all the bells and whistles uh, that you find from uh, modern MBTs the turret itself as well is incredibly well angled and it's supposed to have modular uh, armor this means that it can be 
replaced at any time, very similar to what we see from other vehicles of the similar era. You can see this mainly on the Leclerc, which is uh, probably the easiest example to push towards for this idea of replaceable armor. So in case something gets damaged, you can always just take it off and replace it. Now, what is, uh, there's also some countermeasures on this machine, stuff that we've talked about in the past. It has a laser dazzler countermeasure uh, with a range of up to five kilometers, also has a laser warning receiver and uh, 12 uh, smoke grenade launchers on top of it. Now, what I also mentioned is the A version. So you got the ZTZ-99, this was uh, active in service in 2001, and then you have the 99A. Now, the 99A uh, actually comes into service in 2003, and uh, it was actually, well, sorry, it didn't come into service in 2003, it started to be developed in 2003, and the prototype was underway in 2007. Now, the limited knowledge that we have of the 99 becomes even worse when it comes to the 99A. So the main things that we know about it is the driver's hatch was moved from the center left to the center right of the hull. Uh, it also seems to have a better ATGM also third generation ERA and active protection shist, uh, systems and also some arrow shaped applique armor which is similar to the Leopard 2A5 and uh, consequent Leopards after it. Also has uh, a commander's periscope and some integrated uh, better propulsion systems and uh, the other difference as well is the ZTZ-99 is supposed to have a 1200 horsepower engine where this 99A has a 1500 horsepower engine so so it should be a little bit quicker around the battlefield. It also still has the laser warning receiver. So yeah, those are two classified or two heavily classified vehicles that we don't know too much about, but I'm sure at some point they'll come to War Thunder. So that was a look at all the vehicles which were either planned or coming soon to the Chinese tech tree in War Thunder. As you can see, there's a lot of vehicles which are higher tier, and therefore there is a lot to look forward to if you are a player of those higher tiers. It is definitely something which hopefully will come sooner rather than later because of the interesting and intricate designs which are involved with these vehicles. It'll be interesting to see how they get around the classification as well of some of these vehicles, and and also the classified nature of them since they seem to be a bit all over the place but for me I am very much looking forward to a lot of them. If there's a vehicle that hasn't been uh, in this video that you're interested in please leave it in the comments so I can you know have a look at it and uh, be able to expand my research on these interesting Chinese vehicles. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilts, John Ryman, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene's Terry, and also Elove Goats and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.